here is probably my second favorite camera of all time. way to shoot um, to take photos of all time and which is with a rangefinder um, I'm not like partial to just like a it is more preferable for me and pretty much everyone who's shot 35 millimeter rangefinders to shoot it's just a really good system it's built really well and it feels good to hold in your hand and to operate you know all the all the dials the buttons just even the on off switch just are just so satisfying to use. It's just a really well thought out system that's very basic and it works. It's always worked because it's such a simple setup. For some reason, the M240 is the least loved. I don't want to say most hated. I don't think anyone truly hates it. No one would turn it down. The odd duck or the black sheep of the digital M bots. recommend it as much as they do when someone asks for recommendations of a rangefinder. Those that don't like it really don't like it, but those that love it really, really love it. I've had this camera now for well over five years, uh, probably longer. I gotta say, it's just rugged. It's tough. It's beautiful. I like the black paint. It's probably my favorite finish or, or color or paint for any any like a rangefinder. I love the way that it just brasses. Um, the more you use it, you know, a lot of people are known to just do it on purpose. Um, I like the size. I like that it's a little bit thicker than uh, most other Leica cameras. Uh, one of the main reasons is they say it's too thick. Um, that thickness is, in my opinion, perfect. It's just my hand just kind of wraps around it, you know. I like it. My hands aren't enormous, but I guess they're a little bit on the bigger side. Um, it's just a very positive object to hold, especially one that you're going to use to photograph or create or whatever you want to call it. With. So that's one of the main things people don't like about it. They say it's too thick, too heavy, even for the brass models. And I gotta be honest, yeah, it's big and heavy. You could probably beat someone to death with this and it's brass and I have once or twice kind of just um, swung it while well, wearing it, kind of like swung it and caught my elbow with it and uh, it hurts. I think once I was just picking it up and I was trying to swing it around to my shoulder or something and I caught my orbital bone and I was like, wow, that's like brass knuckles. The ease of use is like any other camera um, except it's got this little button on the side which is used to record video and the video is pretty bad and who cares it's a rangefinder like a decide to add video to this it can just you can just ignore a button don't use it for video although i know someone out there um and i've seen their work i can't remember who it is made videos with this years ago and they were really good because the videographer or, or whoever was super creative and they did a great job editing and, and a great job um, doing the, uh, the color grading, I guess. Would you um, let's face it, the Leica rangefinders are basically an incredibly functional uh, fashion accessory. They're expensive. There's really no need for them to be this expensive. Yeah, I get they're made in Germany, but so are a lot of things. And let's be honest, these things are priced... Uh, like uh, luxury watches really if we're being completely objective they're outdated the dynamic range at least 
well, let's ignore the latest editions of the um, cameras, but their colors are not quite accurate. Their dynamic range is limited compared to most others like Panasonic or Sony. Um, they cost more than a GFX and don't come close to the quality of those files. But that's okay. That's not necessarily why people shoot um, and mount rangefinders, film or digital. The other gripe people have, and I guess this is the big one, um, Leica shooters are uh, particular about colors and the look of the files that come off the sensor. Um, I don't think it's that big of a deal because I think most people, myself included, edit the raw files and don't really use the JPEGs from pretty much any camera that isn't a Fuji. If you want to shoot JPEGs, get a Fuji. If you want to shoot JPEGs, get a Fuji. They're incredible for that. I don't know about the latest uh, iteration. Um, I'm very familiar with the M9, the M240, and the 246 monochrome, and the Q. Those are the ones that I've had tons and tons of experience with. Now, the M240 stuck, and it stuck for more than half a decade, well over half a decade, because I bonded with it. And the files coming out of it, I'll be honest, the JPEGs are terrible. The colors, uh, when you first get them into Lightroom or whatever, they're a bit off, just a bit. Some may like that look. They're kind of uh, a little muted, a little portra, I would say. Some people say it's like slide film. I think they just ask, or they require being coaxed digitally before you export them as whatever. Um, and yeah when you first get it, when you first deal with the files, when you first um, start working with the files, when you first look at the colors, you're like, oh, uh, mm -hmm. and if you don't really spend much time with it, you're like, I don't get the hype. This is not for me. I don't like it. Uh, the M240 sucks. No, the M240 doesn't suck. Spend some time with the files. This camera, if kept under ISO 800, produces really, really good quality files that stand up pretty pretty well uh, to editing. And with the M240, if you don't like editing your files, you're not gonna like the M240. If you like to do a little bit of work and just export everything and that's it, you don't wanna get too much into changing up colors and saturation and, uh, well, use saturation luminance and all this thing and the color grade and everything. If you don't wanna do that, um, maybe just shoot fuji fuji's great again just dial in your jpeg recipes for fuji it's a good time if you don't like editing i've never really run into another person who's shooting an m240 and i haven't ran into that and i haven't run into that many people that shoot like at all um those that like it and use it have no issues with it and it's base iso or 400 800 up, going above 800 you don't get the best results which is fine that's even shooting into the evening um, if you've got an f2 lens it's fine it's plenty um, and again the main attraction of this system is the range finder focusing mechanism some people can scale focus with the lens at almost at f2 and i used to be pretty good all the way down to up until f4 I was really, really good at scale focusing, just using the lens. But there's something about just engaging with your photo or your scene or just dialing in the focus by hand, you know. The whole point is to use a mechanical tool to create something. And when you have the focusing mechanism um, and you get good at it, it's very satisfying. It's rewarding. I find that I don't miss too many shots. Um, unless it's my crazy two-year-old running around, um, then yeah, it can get a little frustrating. But when you're outside and you're focused more on composition and stuff, it's no issue. Um, even when you're scale focusing, you gotta put it up to your eye to compose. I'm always surprised about the some of the dislike that the M240 gets. And as an M240 user and diehard user, man, if you're not considering this camera and you're getting into the M system, you're doing yourself a disservice. They're super affordable right now. The prices just keep 
going down. They kind of shot up for a while. I think a year and a half, two years ago. But no, they're, they've come back down. Uh, especially with like the M10, the M11, the Q2, the Q3. Those are, those are spaceships compared to this thing. Even today, if uh, this was all I had to shoot with, it would not be a problem. Um, but of course, nothing can solve your gas. Nothing. The M240 gets a bit of hate, but it is, in my opinion, pretty undeserved. This camera is wonderful. Thank you.